Hey there, homies. This is Sarah. And this is Ashley. And this is Hometown Homicide. Hopefully. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. Fuck. Welcome back to another week of murder and mayhem. Yes, and this week we do not have to start with any rest in pieces. No, not rest no in rest in holes either. <laughs> Instead of pieces, holes, get it, you know. I mean, yeah. I don't even know if that's how you say it, but... We've lost our minds. <laughs> we have, we are having difficulties with our sound, with the software that we use, Soundtrap. We, my ghost is fucking us up, and it's really annoying. So last week, I understand the sound probably didn't sound the best. It wasn't top notch, but we had. To I do had what COVID. We, had to do. we were separate, like in separate. We were in our home. own home. Yes, and someone left a review saying that the sound sounds bad, which we get. Thank you for the feedback. Yeah, thank you for the feedback. We, we appreciate it. And they were nice about it. We use that to build, to grow, to make this a better experience for everybody. Yes. But now we're having actual technical issues, so Ooh. we are down to one microphone. And we were having the issues last night, too, while recording our first paid Patreon, paid Patreon, hometown homicide, happy hour fucking haunted edition we decided but we we made it through it whatever so we appreciate everyone who is sticking with us week by week homies and we promise we will get this figured out we just want to bring a great experience to you to so that you keep coming back so bear with us we are still new we are still learning Mm -hmm. and yes the reviews and feedback is much appreciated so hopefully we will learn from that and make it better and also appreciated is our newest patron how to spot a killer she also has a podcast that is amazing on youtube a podcast supporting podcast thank you amazing she's a basic homie appreciate it love ya um was there something oh <clears throat> there will be an update slash supplemental, I don't know, information about Bob Dale's case, the missing in Michigan. Uh, he was the third one of that one. Um, I did actually get to interview his wife the other day over the phone and get to talk to her about what she does remember and her experience that night and and whatnot so i can we can share that it's not enough for a full episode but i didn't want to have it take any focus away from the story of today so it'll be a whole separate little bonus extra for everybody for everybody yes not just paid patron patrons yes but anyways I think that's it for news and stuff thank you for those that did reach out after the last episode i do feel better so thank you. I did not die. She did not die. Are you sure? Are you not? A, are you a ghost right now? I have is that no the problem. I, is oh my god! A, I figured it out. Is this a sixth sense? Are you real? Okay. I don't, <laughs> would I feel pain? I don't know. I don't know how this. Never been a ghost before. <laughs> I haven't either. <laughs> like I actually touched you. <laughs> is Ashley rotting in the bedroom? <laughs> Oh, God. (laughs) Am I imagining all of this? This will be another episode of an episode. (laughs) My gosh. But today's episode is going to be the murder of Julie Jensen. This goes out to Wisconsin. Since we haven't shown any love to Wisconsin yet. The cheese state. Sorry about your loss. Not really not a Packers fan so I don't really care I'm I'm okay with the pack but you know go Chiefs that's the more important thing sure (laughs) 
Anyways, let's get into the story of Julie Jensen. She was born as Julie Carol Griffin on February 26, 1958. Two days before, different year, but two days before my birthday. In Kenosha, Wisconsin. Oh. She was the only daughter of the late Raymond Griffin and June Griffin. Julie was known as having a gentle, carefree, easygoing nature. She was somewhat quiet, although she enjoyed being with people. Her personality was warm, caring, and sincere. Growing up, she was an excellent student, having maintained straight A's and an honor roll throughout middle school and high school. She was also involved with music, played the accordion at an early age, which I don't think would be an easy no, instrument to play. No, I can't imagine. Uh, she later then sang in choir and played violin in school or- orchestras. That was fun. But Julie was also described as having a complicated family life. Her mother was an alcoholic and her younger brother died in an accident as a toddler. Oh. Which they use against her quite a bit in this. Okay. Which kind of pissed me off. Okay. Now, Julie was working at a Sears department store in Oshkosh when she met Mark Jensen in 1981. They were both attending University of Wisconsin Parkside in Kenosha. They married April 14th, 1984. Mark and Julie then moved to Carroll Beach, which is a neighborhood of Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin, where they had two children, David and Douglas. Even with her complicated family history, she was a devoted mother to her two sons. For people on the outside looking in, Julie Jensen appeared to have it all. We all looked up to her as being a perfect mother, said one of her friends, Kim Shaw. December 3rd, 1998, 40-year-old Jensen, Judy, Julie, Judy, Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) Amen. (laughs) Okay. 40-year-old Julie was discovered dead in bed by her husband, Mark. In the early hours of the investigation, her death was marked as a suicide by police. But District Attorney Bob Jamboys was there that day and felt different and said it didn't look right. Mm -hmm. According to one of their neighbors, Carrie Ashley, he was laughing and joking and Mark, Mm, he, Mark, her husband, Mm. was acting like someone at a cocktail party at the funeral. Oh. And said, I would probably mourn a stranger more than he mourned Julie. Yeek. And when Julie's autopsy didn't show any signs of foul play, it also showed nothing. Okay. So, And they also said it didn't look like natural causes hmm. either. Yeah. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Hometown Homicide Podcast and Twitter at Ope Murder. All right, so before Julie's death, she investigated her husband. She checked his planner, photographed a note, and documented her suspicions. She even gave a letter to a neighbor with instructions to hand it to police if anything should happen to her. She wrote that she would never commit suicide and that if she died, police should consider her husband a suspect. (laughs) And said, I pray that I am wrong and nothing happens. But I am suspicious of Mark's suspicious behaviors and fear for my early demise. Yeah. Ooh, that's, yeah, not great. Not great. Right? So Ted and Margaret, Margaret Voigt, that's who Julie gave the letter to. Um, the letter was in a sealed envelope, also contained a picture of a shopping list. So she found this shopping list in Mark's planner took a picture and included it. So they handed that over to the police Mm. after her death. More of what the letter had to say, if anything happens to me, he would be my first suspect. I would never take my life because of my kids. They are everything to me. She also mentioned in the letter about her having an affair seven years ago with a creep. And she regrets that. Now it was said that Julie thought about divorce, but Voight said Julie told her, Mark would kill me first before he divorced me. 
It was also said that Julie said, if I ever tried to leave him, he would make it look like I was crazy and I wouldn't get to see the children. And that was according to a Dateline interview. Hmm. According to, to the Dateline hmm. that I found on YouTube, she went to her kid's third grade teacher and told her all of this. Jeez. They also went to the police. Yeah. Did nothing. The <laughs> shopping list that was written by Mark included a list of such items as poisons and syringes. Oh. Investigators viewed the contents of the envelope as key evidence and as Julie's last will and testament. But against Julie's wishes of being buried in a burial plot near family relatives, which she discussed with her brother Paul, Mark had her remains cremated. Oh, yeah, that's not sketchy at all. Oh, it gets better. <laughs> it gets better. Julie wasn't the only one who had an affair. Mark had been having an affair with a married co-worker, Kelly Labonte, and professed his love to her in emails that were found on his computer. Shitbag. Which, watching Dateline, <laughs> said that he tried to clear the computer, <laughs> but they found Dumbass. everything. Prosecutors thought the letter and emails would help prove that Mark Jensen had a hand in his wife's death, but in 2002... This pissed me off. The letter was ruled inadmissible. Mm. According to U.S. law, the accused always has the right to face his accuser. Oh, that's fucking stupid. But she's dead, she's so you can't. dead because of him. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Sorry, it's not funny. His family, or her family, fought to get the letter admitted because that was Julie's voice. So in 2007, after years of legal disputes, which made their way to the Wisconsin Supreme Court, Julie Jensen's letter was finally ruled admissible and a trial date was set. Well, that's good. Mark Jensen was accused of murder in the first degree. During the very high profile trial, Attorney General Bob Jamboys argued that the man poisoned his wife with antifreeze and then suffocated her so he could start a new life with his mistress. So you know that married co-worker Mark yeah. was having an affair with? Mm -hmm. She moved in with Mark shortly after <laughs> Julie died. Oh, what a... And they married in 2002. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. These people. So when people say, oh, always look at the spouse. Yeah, I mean... The wife literally laid out a roadmap to her murder. Yeah, and then they acted very sketchy. Very sus. A little too quickly after. I mean, not that you should do this, but if you're going to do shit like this, there's literally shit like this out there to be like, you shouldn't do that. These people got caught because of it. Like, you know, you could do research if you if you wanted to do something. Which they would find on your computer if you did. Well, and, you know, and then you would also know that you can't search that shit on your computer because you can't delete it because it's always there. So, like, <laughs> alternatives. Figure it out. Or just don't do that. I mean, yeah, that like, would be the easiest way. Get a divorce, you fuckface. While Mark was in the Wisconsin jail, he met Aaron Dillard, who was a jailhouse informant, and told him that he had fed his wife juice mixed with antifreeze but that julie wouldn't die fast enough mm. dillard testified that the suspect told him his son saw their mother having difficulty breathing and wanted to take her to the hospital he told so this is dillard he that mark told him uh -huh. he got scared and that's when he rolled her over sat on her back and pushed her face into the pillow oh my god because they didn't even think of suffocation until this came out. Dillard was interviewed by 2020 and said at first Mark told him that Julie tried to commit suicide with poison. Mm. Like she did it herself. And her whole family was crazy and that she was just following <clears throat> in their footsteps. Mm. But Dillard then made a comment to Mark and then Mark started spilling the tea. <laughs> and this tea was hot. <laughs> like the tea I had earlier and about burnt my tongue off. Which it still hurts. Excellent. Mark was teary-eyed talking about his kids. Oh, geez. And that's when I brought in the point of, of we all did what we did to get here. And then he, that's when he came out with and started telling me more about what he did. He didn't show any sorrow about his wife but being dead. He, did, he didn't. 
about her passing away, about any of it. But at trial, defense attorney Craig Alby described Dillard as a con man, and he's a liar, and you cannot believe him beyond a reasonable doubt. During the trial, many witnesses came forward to talk about Julie's character. When Ted Voigt testified, he told the jury that Jensen believed her husband was trying to kill her, and that she had seen him on poison sites on the internet. Julie even took her suspicions to the police before she died, but without proof, her husband was not even questioned. Uh. <clears throat> Defense attorney Craig Alby told the jury that Julie framed Mark by leaving the letter, making it look like he harmed her because her depression and her despair and her anger and her delusional thinking caused her to point the finger at Mark. In the Dateline episode, his parents mm. also said that this was just one big scheme that Julie had because she didn't want to be married anymore. She didn't want a husband. And she wrote this note, did all this stuff online, did the shopping list to frame him, and she wasn't supposed to die. She was just supposed to take the antifreeze and get sick, and then it could come back so she could get the kids. Uh, That's just what <clears throat> his parents said uh, in the interview, and I was just like, really? Like, that's really far-fetched. Yeah. I mean, some people go to great lengths, but that seems a bit uh, over the top. Right. Julie's longtime physician testified that she came to see him days before her death and that she was worried. She was highly upset. It was burned into my mind. I've never seen her look like that. She was distraught, almost frantic. Actually, he said, Julie was concerned about her family's previous history with mental illness, particularly her mother's lifelong struggle with alcoholism and serious depression. So he then prescribed her Paxil and Ambien. Okay. But it was antifreeze. <laughs> and I do have the letter. Hmm. I'll read it at the end. The prosecution's case ran five weeks, and the defense took just five days. Mark did not take the stand in his defense, but ultimately the jury did not believe that Julie committed suicide. Well, that's I mean, good. I think that's pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. They took four days to deliberate, and before a packed courtroom, read a verdict of guilty in the murder of Julie Jensen. Good. In February 2008, he was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Mind you, this happened in 98. Mm -hmm, but, yeah. So 10 years later, mm -hmm. he was sentenced to life without parole. Their two kids were being raised by his mistress. Okay, former mistress because they were married at this time, oh, but still. still really shitty. He is still currently in prison and still ma maintains that he is innocent. Mark will be getting a second trial that is scheduled for May 23rd, 2022. Unfortunately, the letter Julie left, along with voicemail she left for a Pleasant Prairie police officer. Say that a few times fast. I know, you're very focused when you say that. I, yeah, Pleasant Prairie police officer. Yes. I've said it a few times, and it came out blah, 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 <laughs> so I had to, had to focus. Yes. Will, so the letter in those voicemails will not be used in the new trial because the Supreme Court have ruled that the admission oh of the God. letters and voicemail at Jensen's original trial violated Jensen's That's Sixth horseshit. Amendment right to confront witnesses against him. That's stupid! So they, you know, oh prosecution, my God. Like, he forfeited, forfeited that right by killing his wife. Yeah. Making her unavailable to testify. Like, yeah. Uh, um, also, oh as he awaits his retrial, Jensen is being held on a $1.2 million bond. And then I also saw that his Kelly, yeah. that he married, yeah. his former mistress, yeah. filed for divorce. Oh. But yeah, that the fact that they can't use that because... Uh, that I, It's fucking bass backwards. It violated his Sixth Amendment right. Like, well, he yeah, violated all of her rights. Exactly. So. Exactly. 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 <laughs> exactly. So the letter says, please 
Prairie Police. No. <laughs> Pleasant Prairie Police Department. Ron Kosman or Detective Ratzenberg. Again, this is in her handwriting, so mm. mind you if something doesn't make sense because I can't read it. I took this picture and I'm writing this on Saturday, 11 21 98 at 7 a.m. This list was in my husband's business daily planner, not meant for me to see. I didn't know what it means. <laughs> I don't know what it means, but if anything happens to me, he would be my first suspect. Our relationship has deteriorated to the polite superficial hmm. from what it looks like. I know he's never forgiven me for the brief affair I had with that creep seven years ago. Mark lives for work and the kids. He's an avid surfer of the internet. Mm. Which, mind you, the internet was pretty new then. In yeah. 98. It's dedication if you're going to do a whole lot of surfing because it's not much out there. You know, 10 minutes of that. And then <laughs> take right. forever to load. Anyway, I do not smoke or drink. My mother was an alcoholic, so I limit my drinking to one or two a week. Mark wants me to drink more with him in the evenings, but I don't. I would never take my life because of my kids. They are everything to me. I regularly, 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 yes, take Tylenol and multivitamins. Occasionally take OTC stuff for colds. Zantac or Imodium. I have one prescription for migraine tablets, which Mark uses more than me. I pray I am wrong and nothing happens, but I am suspicious of Mark's suspicions, behaviors, and fear for my early demise. However, I will not leave, and it's blurred out, but I'm guessing David and Douglas, mm. my life's greatest love, accomplishments, and wish. My three Ds. Daddy, which is Mark. David Douglas. The fact that she called him daddy. Call me daddy. Oh. That's, but yeah, that was a letter uh, that she had sealed if anything happened. Yeah, it's not great when you, when you need to write one of those letters. Right? Yeah. No bueno. But that is that the sucks. murder of Julie Jensen. It, it was very interesting to me, and they called it the letter from the grave. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Also, mm -hmm. not that this had anything to do with some other recent episodes of other podcasts. A lot of people have been talking about murders of using poison like antifreeze. A lot of them recently. Was that one of Morbid's newest ones? Or was it one, I, I, I listened to one the other day that talked about the dude, no, the chick. Yeah. She killed, like, her stepdad and shit. It was over, like, uh, like her lifetime, basically. But I don't know if it was a new Morbid or an old Morbid that I went back to. I, honestly, I don't know, even know which ones. I've been listening to so many podcasts recently, because <laughs> trying to also support other podcasts, right -o, right -o. leaving them reviews, mm -hmm. helping them out, and we appreciate everyone who's done that for us, yep. and hopefully this one sounds better. If anyone has any recommendations on software, yeah, tweet Yeah, we us. might need an alternate option if Soundtrap doesn't get its shit figured out. And one last thing I should have mentioned is go over to YouTube, Hometown Homicide Podcast, subscribe, comment that you did, and you will be entered into oh, our yeah, drawing yeah. once we hit 100 subscribers yeah. for our first milestone on that. And we are going to give away something. Something. Some sort of a merch. A wearable merch. I figure. Because, yeah. you know, we can... So hopefully soon I'll get the stickers and we can throw one in there too, but yeah. So we appreciate everyone for sticking with us who has and listened and left us a review. I told their friends. Oh, we got Germany. We got Germany. Oh. Like hardcore. They, somebody listened to like, I think all of them because it's like a red spot. 
Thank you, Germany. You know, I've noticed we have nothing in Nevada. And like Malaysia or something, too. Huh. It was a, it was something over there that I had to like zoom in because I didn't know what the fuck it was. But appreciate it. And what's up, Nevada? Where are you at? Yeah, we still need Nevada and New Mexico and Louisiana and then like Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire and Rhode, Rhode Island. Island. I think that's the right. Oh, well, in Alaska and Hawaii, but I just was talking the lower 48. Sure. Gotcha. But yeah. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun to see our analytics and our maps and stuff. But follow us on all the medias and like us if, if you want to. If you don't want to like it, that's okay. Do what you want, but we appreciate it. Yeah. Patreon. There's still still plenty of room for more homies to come on. So minimum or the lowest level is only five dollars a month to be a basic homie, and you get a bonus episode. You get a day early access to each of the normal weekly episodes. You know, and go to Good Pods and then rate us, please, 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 because we dropped and then we raised again. I haven't checked it today. We were twenty one. Oh, that's better. Indie podcast list. The other last piece of news I forgot was 2020 did oh, yeah. a episode of Jody Husendrew that we covered beginning of our podcast days. which Episode I, three. Which we're still technically in the early stages. Yes. Um, we've had a lot of ups already. So, But anyways, it was very, 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 very good. Obviously, it's abc 2020 they have more resources they teamed up with the podcast findjody.com mm. who put up those billboards and they have some new tips some new leads obviously they couldn't say what it was but oh man it was very good it was a good watch yeah i didn't catch it yet when did it come out it aired last night so okay, it's on yeah. hulu today so, yeah no i was not sponsored Hulu. I was at work all day. Two hours extra, actually, so I have not had time to watch it yet. But on the list of things to do, hopefully that can be brought to an end soon. Hopefully. It'd be amazing if they could bring her home alive. But anyways, that was my episode on Julie Jensen. Again, we want to tell stories to you, not about you. So stay safe. And this has been Hometown Homicide. <laughs>